All right, new red line chapter, and this is definitely one of the better chops in a while, especially, you know, with the way chapter 11 was getting released, right? So I'm glad we're finally getting through the skirmish between, you know, Okita versus Oreo, and not because of anything specifically wrong with it either. It's just, I think everyone will agree that there's just so much more story to cover that it kind of felt prolonged, but even with just 20 pages this week, we just got so much here with this new chapter, so definitely a lot to talk about. Also, just gonna say this here really quickly while I can before, you know, we get into the chapter this is actually my first redline chapter review but i'm definitely going to be reviewing this manga more here on the channel so yeah please subscribe if you're down for more redline content that'd be awesome i'll talk more about this at the end of the video of course but for now let's just get into this chapter so it picks up right where chapter 11 ended we're seeing kanata meet with okita and given that he followed her mana to find her location i'm guessing he gets the idea here since we know her mana was getting pretty low in her fight against oreo anyway so he just instantly he thinks this is the 2v1 but then we get one of the best moments in this chapter when oreo just straight up tells him oreo is simply oreo it's amazing how in just like 20 pages or whatever how many good moments we got here in this chapter honestly but then ryoma brings him up to speed basically you know offering the same deal he gave to okita about their alliance to defeat archer you know in exchange for protection since the army's after him and saber and then we get this amazing shot of okita she just goes full aggro here and considering how low her mana must be at it's insane how she's just so ready to kill them here regardless and yeah insane art and what's interesting here is when oreo reacts to this we get a shot of ryoma reaching for his gun too so i think both of them were you know prepared for the worst here if kanata was actually going to use the command seal and then right before we could get rider versus saber round two kanata you know just decides to go ahead with the alliance and dude the face okita makes here when she hears this is just so good like her eyes are just giving a full-on death stare and i think this is really interesting because I'm curious as to where the story is going with this. Like, I wonder if she's now going to feel insecure that he agreed to this alliance. You know, like if she's thinking, oh, now, you know, my master thinks I'm not strong enough to protect him, let alone win the grail. Because I don't think she's necessarily angry towards him, considering that even after Ryoma thanks him for agreeing to their alliance, she's still just standing there with this dead look on her face. So if I had to make a guess, I think it's probably out of humility that we get this reaction from her. And I could be wrong here for another reason reason and it's that in chapter 11 when oreo described her to ryoma she just tells him straight up that okita isn't human she's something entirely different and abandons the plan to you know continue their negotiation so who knows maybe it's both maybe there is something just very blood hungry about her that makes her almost inhuman like oreo noticed and i can definitely see this playing a big part in their alliance and honestly it's a good parallel to you who archer is since it would make them both just you know pure savages who just devote themselves to battle. So then after this, we cut to a new scene. We're seeing Colonel Magatsu meeting up with the soldiers he sent from before, and it seems like even the army isn't entirely aligned with Archer either. And honestly, Magatsu just gave me really hard Shinji vibes here, right? Like, I never really liked him anyway, but just how manipulative he is towards even his own soldiers makes me feel like he's like, uh, you know, the, the token Shinji stereotype here in this bait universe. Especially with what happens later when we see how he talks to Kaname. So, overall, all I can see him dying pretty soon, you know, hopefully. So before he starts trash talking her, we actually see Kaname with the mystic code that brought Kanata back in time that, interestingly enough, Archer was able to find back in her initial fight against Saber. And this is really curious because, at least from what Ryoma was able to imply, it sounds like Archer was also able to fight in the previous Grail War. So if this is somehow all connected, it'd be interesting to see how Archer plans to use this mystic code if she's somehow able to figure it out. Because we can at least assume from what Ryoma implied that the Grail never disappeared from the Grail War before this one. So it could be that Archer's hoping to just, you know, use the Mystic Code with the Grail in some way. We just don't know how or what yet. Either that or maybe she could be trying to figure it out so that she can continue, you know, existing even after the Grail War is finished. Since we still don't know how she's been able to exist during the time before, you know, this current Grail War started. So then after going full Shinji on her, we finally see after all this time, Nobu make her big return and you know I get the feeling she heard everything he was saying to 
to Kaname, and it really wouldn't surprise me if she's even also aware that the army isn't entirely loyal to her either. Because it's not like Magatu's even trying to hide the way he treats Kaname. I mean, he ends up, you know, getting caught in 4K like an idiot, but I think Nobu's playing it smart here. I think she knows that for now at least, she needs to rely on the military until, you know, she no longer needs them and can get rid of Magatu and everyone else who isn't on her side. Especially since Nobu and Kaname give me like heavy Ryder and Sakura vibes, so I feel like they're both at the very least on good terms with each other where Nobu can, you know, acknowledge Kaname as a worthy master. So after showing up, she just passes him by, doesn't even acknowledge him, but tells him to come by tomorrow so she can show him what she's been doing on her own. So it sounds like this can have something to do with the Mystic Code, but again, I really don't think Nobu's gonna give him everything he needs. At least maybe just enough so that no one suspects anything about her so that, you know, she can continue doing whatever she wants without the army checking in every time. And like usual, this just angers Magatu since she straight up disrespects him. And then after all this, we get back to Kanata and the rest. We're seeing Oreo trying to heal up Tsukumo, I think, or at least that's what I'm guessing, but they're all here at Ryomo's detective office except Saber. So hopefully the next chapter picks up on this so we can touch back on what Okita's reaction is to all this. All right, guys, so I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so much for watching. And like I said at the beginning, I will be doing more Redline chapter reviews and just more Redline content here on the channel. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe if you're down. That'd be awesome. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great day.